Hello, welcome back to Math 332 Linear Algebra. In this video, we are going to look at uh, section 1.8 and section 8.1, which is one of the very important concepts in linear algebra, namely the concept of linear transformations. So uh, we're going to have a two parts presentations for this. And this is the first part of the presentations where we introduce to you what is linear transformations. We'll look at the definitions and we're also going to look at the definitions of a matrix transformations. And uh, specifically, we are going to look at when you have a very special type of linear transformations, which take an ele elements in the Euclidean space Rn and map it to another Euclidean space Rm, then the concept of matrix transformations and linear transformations is actually equivalent. And we are going to also look at uh, the significance of this result at the end of the video. Um, and so this is actually a very important topic in linear algebra, the concept of linear transformations. So let's get right to it. All right, let's begin by looking at the objective for this section. So at the end of this section, you should know what is the matrix transformations. You should know what is the linear transformations. And you need to know, uh, given the transformations, uh, you should be able to determine whether that transformation is linear or not. And uh, for this type, particular type of uh, transformations, uh, you should know that uh, this type of transformation is linear. It's the same as this type of transformation is matrix transformations. So linear transformation and matrix transformations, uh, they are the same thing for uh, transformations that looks like this. Okay, so what is a transformation? So transformations is nothing new. This concept of transformations is um, actually nothing new. You have seen it in high school before. You just call it by different names. So in high school, we call transformations as a functions or uh, mapping. And in high school, usually you look at the uh, functions or mapping that take uh, real numbers and map it to another real number. So for example, you have fx equal to x squared plus one. So your input here is a real number and your output here is also a real number. So this is one type of example uh, you have seen in high school. And if you have taken um, uh, multivariable calculus, you could also have seen a function that looks like this. So this is a type of functions that takes an element that is in R3 and map it to uh, real numbers. So you can see right here, the input here is actually uh, either a one by three row vectors or three by one column vectors, and this is the numbers. So you can see the input here. So sometimes in linear algebra, we tend to write X, Y, Z like that. Uh, but uh, in calculus, they usually write it like that, but it's the same thing. It means that the input is going to be a vectors, either row vectors or column vectors. But the output here, it looks very complicated, but the output here, if you evaluate all the X, Y, and Z, once you have all those numbers, uh, the output here, as you can see, is nothing but a numbers. So this is an example of a transformations, uh, a mapping of functions that take an element that is from R3 and map it to R. We can also have an uh, example, okay, that is, from that is going to take an element that is from R3 and map it to R2. So this is one type of example. So you can see the input here is again a, a three by one column vectors and the output here is a two by one column vectors. So this is an example of a transformation, a mapping, a function, they are all the same thing uh, that takes an element that is in R3 and map it to an element that is in R2. Okay, so this is another example uh, that takes an element that is in R3 and maps it to an, uh, an element that is in R3. So these are all transformations. Uh, transformations, mapping, functions, they are the same thing. Okay, so now well, let's talk about linear transformation. So what is linear transformations? So obviously linear transformations is a type of transformations that satisfy some kind of like special properties. So the special properties for this linear transformations to satisfy is this too. So we want our transformations, okay, any type of mapping, any type of functions, let's just concentrate um, our transformations uh, from our end to our M first, and we'll look at some other example later. But if you're given a transformation that's like this, a mapping of functions, if you figure out that this particular transformation satisfy this property, this is called additive properties, which means that uh, if you take, so I'm using this tilde here to indicate the column vectors. Uh, in the notes here, it's been bow, so that's the difference. So again, this is an Rn vector. We call that vector also, okay? So instead of calling that um, 
and by one column vectors, we just call them vectors, okay? So these are typical vectors. So we want our transformations to satisfy this property. So this is called the uh, additive property. So if you can find a transformation that can satisfy this property for all the vectors that is in the input set, okay? So this is the domain. And also, if you can find a transformations that can also do this, if you take a constant, this is a scalar, which is just a number, and you realize that this is the same as if you can take the constant out and you get that. So this is called the homogeneity properties. So a uh, transformations, a uh, functions or a mapping that satisfy these two property, um, this type of transformation is very, very special. And if you do have transformation that satisfy these two properties, which is the additive properties and the homogeneity property, then we will say that transformation is linear. So linear means this, okay? Cool. So let's look at some example. Uh, so this is an example that we have seen just now. So again, this is a uh, transformations that take R3 to R2, right? So the input is in R3, the output is in R2. The question is, uh, is this a linear transformation? So how do you determine? So this is one of like the typical homework or exam problem. Uh, exam problem will be harder than this, but uh, I say it's a homework problem. So you're given a transformation and you're asked to show that this transformation is actually linear. Or uh, you are being asked to determine whether this is a linear transformation or this is not. So what you need to do is to see whether or not these two properties satisfy. So, so let's take two vectors, okay? So let's look at this carefully. So once you have this input x1 and z, you're going to put x, y, z in this manner, x, y, z in this manner. So I hope you know how to read this function. So this is the input, that's the output. Okay, so now we want to show that the homogeneity property and additive properties hold. So this is, let's just concentrate on additive property. So we take two arbitrary functions from the input uh, uh, set, which is our domain. So our domain here is R3. So we decided to take one of the vectors is x1, y1, z1, and another vector here is x2, y2, z2. So we want to see whether or not this uh, can be written as t of u, okay, plus t of v, right? So let's look at how we define this, right? So remember, it's t Okay, of this thing, this thing, and running out of symbol, this thing, it's going to map accordingly to something that is like this, okay, and so on and so forth, right? So now you have these two vectors. So how do we add these two vectors? So we add these two vectors together. So the input here, so now the input here, you will have T1, and then you have X1 plus X2, Y1 plus Y2, right? And then Z1 plus Z2, Okay, this is what happened after you add up these two vectors. So now this thing here will go inside here. This thing here will go inside here. This thing here will go inside here. All right, so again, this thing here will go inside here. This thing here will go inside here. And this thing here will go inside here. All right, that is how we read this particular mapping. Okay, so once we have that, okay, so you can expand and regroup, expand and regroup expand and regroup so you can basically see that this thing okay after you expand and regroup can be written like this and this part here is t1 of x1 y1 z1 and this part here is x2 y2 z2 so i will encourage you to pause the video if you don't see it uh, but uh, basically what happened is just regrouping expanding and regrouping and put it in the form that you can see that this is the same as this mapping and this is the same as this mapping. So if you look at this result, okay, right here and uh, ignore all the detail, you will see that the additive property holds. So T of U plus V is the same as T of U plus T of V. So the additive properties um, is satisfied. Okay, let's check the homogeneity property. So if you take a constant, multiply of vectors, can you take the constant out and write it like this? Okay, so that's the question. So now you have C, multiply this vector. So the way we multiply vectors is multiply component-wise. So again, this part here go here, 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 and this part here go here. And uh, you will see 
what happened is they all have the C that you can factor out. You have the C that you can factor out. So what we get is this one, and this is uh, a, 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 a matrix. This is actually a two by one matrix. And we know that for matrix um, scalar multiplications, you can take the scalar out. And what you see is that this part right here is exactly T1 of X, Y, Z, and you have C right here. So again, suppressing all the detail and just concentrate on this two part, okay, you will see that the homogeneity property is actually satisfied. So uh, this transformation is actually satisfied the additive property and the homogeneity property. So this is by definition uh, a type of linear transformations, okay? Now, if you still remember, we also have a mapping called T2, which is a mapping that is uh, uh, a mapping that is take an element that is from R3 and map it to an, another element that is in R3. So this, if you ask to verify that uh, this is not non, this is actually a non-linear transformation, meaning that you will see that the either the uh, additive property or the homogeneity property. Uh, will fail, right? So this additive property and the homogeneity property. Okay, so one of it or both of it will fail. So this is actually not a linear transformation because additive property will not hold and homogeneity property will also will not hold. And you can verify that by giving an example. So for example, uh, T2 of 1, 0, 0. So you look at what happens if you put 1, 0, 0. So X is 1. And then y and z are both zero, so you have one. So actually what happened is that you have one, two, and one. So that's with the mapping. So I'm trying to show that the homogeneity property uh, fail. And when you want to show something fail, you can show by example, okay? So you just can show that, uh, because if you look at the definition for the uh, linear transformation, we actually want all of this to hold for all possible uh, vectors and scalars. So if one of the vectors or one of the scalars uh, will make this uh, transformations um, not having the additive and homogeneity property, then it will make the transformation nonlinear. So this is an uh, example where we can just show it by uh, show that the uh, homogeneity property or the additive property would not hold by just showing an example. Okay. So right now, just look at T2100. You see that you get 1, 2, 1. All right. So if you take T2 of 3 times 1, 0, 0, that is what you get. And if you put 3, 0, 0 into this mapping, you have this is uh, 3, this is 6, and this is 9, and you get that. And you can see that this is actually, you can see very easily that this is actually not 3 times of this. Okay, so you do not have 3 times of this. So, so if you look at the end result, T of 3 times this vector is actually not equal to 3 times uh, T2 of this vectors. So the homogeneity property failed to hold for this particular example. And being a linear transformation, so we want this to hold for all the possible scalar and all the possible vectors. So we want this to hold for all the possible vectors and all the possible scalar. And we have found an example where this uh, fails to hold. So therefore, uh, we can conclude that this particular transformation, it is a transformation, okay? It's a mapping, it's a function, it is a transformation, but it is not linear, all right? So you will see a lot of homework problems and exercises like that where you have to verify whether a transformation is linear or whether a transformation is not linear. So remember, showing something is linear is a little bit more complicated and you have to show it in generality, which means that uh, because if you look at the definitions here, if to show something linear, you have to make sure that all these vectors will hold, this property hold for all the vectors. These properties hold for all the vectors and all the scalar. So you can't really show by example. So you actually have to go through um, and slightly more abstract arguments without using a special example. As you can see, we didn't use any special example. Uh, we didn't say that our x, y, z is one, zero, zero. We didn't say that because if you say your x, y, z here is one, zero, zero, then you only show it for that particular example, but we want it to hold for all vectors, right? We want it to hold for all vectors. So this gives you no choice, but to do all this computation abstractly. But when you want to show something does not hold, that is slightly easier. We can argue it by example. So this is um, actually uh, slightly easier to do, okay?
All right. So this is generally true in mathematics. If you want to show that uh, something is uh, is true in general, so for example, if you make a statement that all cats in the world are white. So in order to prove that, you actually have to travel uh, everywhere, uh, every continent to 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 look for every cat and make sure they are all white. But to disprove it is easier because if you find a yellow cat, then the whole idea that all the cats in the world is white is just not true. So one example will destroy the whole thing. So you can argue by example when you try to negate something, but try to show something is uh, linear transformation, for example, in this case, is going to be uh, a little bit trickier. Okay, so what is a matrix transformation then? Right, so let's look at this definition. So matrix transformations is a type of transformations that is in this form, okay? So the definition says that if you have a matrix A of size M by N, okay? And uh, if you have a transformations that is from Rn to Rm, that can be written, that can be written in the form of T of X is equals to A of X, Okay, if your transformations can be written like this, then this kind of transformation is called a matrix transformation. And sometimes we use these uh, notations to indicate that this transformation is a matrix transformation by writing the matrix right here to indicate that this transformation is a matrix transformation. So this is just a notation, all right? And let's look at the size and everything. We always like to uh, do a size analysis. So let's look at this. This is uh, n by one column vectors. So this matrix is m by n right here. And this one here is n by one. That's our input vectors. So the output is this matrix multiplication. So we know they are compatible in terms of multiplications. And the end result is going to be a m by one column vector. So you can see that this ax here is a m by one column vectors. So that uh, justified that we say that this is a mapping uh, that takes an element that is in Rn, that's in Rn, and map it to another element that is in Rm because this is in Rm, as you can see, this is in Rm. Okay, so uh, transformations that can be associated with a matrix, okay, transformations that can be associated with a matrix, a transformation that looks like this, this is called a matrix transformation. Okay, so our first theorem is to show that uh, matrix transformation is linear. Any type of transformation that can be expressed in this form is linear, that's the claim, right? It's linear, and it's actually pretty easy to show because we uh, already know the matrix multiplication property. So uh, you can see that this is nothing but a matrix multiplication property. So it says that uh, any transformation that looks like this, which is called matrix transformation, is actually linear transformations. And the reason is, okay, remember, uh, in order to show something is a linear transformation, you have to show that the additive properties uh, is going to hold. So we want to show that this is true for all the vectors u and v, and we also want to show that this uh, property, the homogeneity property, is uh, also true for all uh, vector u and uh, all scalar c. So you can see this is why we are trying to verify that. So let's put uh, u plus v into so this transformation. So if you have something here, this will be a of that something. So that something here is u plus v, so you have that. And uh, we can distribute because this is a property for matrix transform uh, for matrix multiplications. So this is distribute. You get this, and obviously a u is this, a v is this. So the homogeneity property, sorry, the additive property, uh, hold uh, pretty trivially. Okay, as you can see. And right here, same thing. T of a of something is a of that something. So now your that something is c v. So put c v right here. And the reason why you can take the C out is because uh, this is a property of matrix multiplication again, and you will see that this is uh, C of TV. So again, this shows that the um, homogeneity property hold. So therefore you can see that a matrix transformation is a linear transformation. That's pretty straightforward. A matrix transformation is a linear transformation. So, okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so the questions, which is a, that's the interesting part now. The questions is, um, we know that linear transformations, uh, sorry, we know that matrix transformation is a linear transformation. So the question now is, is that if you have uh, a mapping that looks like this, and if you know it's linear, does it, can we say that if something that is linear is also a matrix transformation? 
So if you have a transformation that looks like this and it's linear, can you say that it is also a matrix transformation, which means that can you write your so-called linear transformation in this form? And the answer is yes, and this is critical. Uh, and this is what we're going to discuss in the second part of this video this is right here, it's um, uh, right now, okay? So the answer is yes. And um, and this uh, how do we how how do we do that right? So this is actually pr pretty interesting. It's not so trivial anymore. The previous uh, arguments is pretty straightforward, but this argument is not so straightforward. But uh, it's not so difficult either. And uh, the proof that we're going to give is something that we call a constructive proof. So in mathematics, sometimes um, there's a theorem which says that something something exists, and the proof will show that that something something exists, but didn't tell you how to actually find them. Uh, so this is called non-constructive proof. But uh, this the, the theorem and the proof that we're going to see now is actually a constructive proof. They say is that linear transformation is a matrix transformation, and they actually tells you how to construct, uh, how to find that matrix A, all right? So how do we find that matrix A? So, all right, so let's look at this theorem. This is uh, the the theorem which says that a linear transformation from Rn to Rm is a matrix transformation, so we want to prove it. So in order to prove it, we better find that matrix A. So uh, if you're given a transformation that is from Rn to Rm, all right, and if it is linear, okay, we want to show that actually that transformation can be written like this uh, with some special A that we are going to construct. So we are basically going to construct this matrix A to show that uh, linear is matrix transformations. Okay, so before we do that, let's just review very, very, very quickly. Remember, linear transformations means we must have this additive property and this homogeneity property, okay? So we're gonna make use of both property in order to construct this matrix A. And before we construct this matrix A, I also want to introduce some notations. And uh, this is something that you're gonna see later on. This is this is the first time you're gonna see this. This is the type of vectors uh, that we call the standard basis for our end. Um, but um, we, we don't have to uh, remember there's a special fancy name right now. Just remember that E1, so it's a n by one column vectors, which uh, everything is zero except this position. Uh, we take the value of one. So E1 is a vector that looks like this. E2 is a vector that looks like this. And all the way to En, that's a vector that looks like this. Okay, so we have n vectors that is in Rn. Okay, and if you have n vectors, this is the n vectors that is in Rn that looks like this, then it's easy to see that if you have a vector, this is again a vector that is in Rn, uh, you can easily see that these vectors can be expressed as the linear combinations of all these vectors e1, e2, all the way to en here, right? So um, you, if you need, you have to pause this video and take a look at this, but uh, I think it's pretty easy to see that this x, which is uh, this vector x, which has component x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn, is x1 of this plus x2 of this plus xn of this, and we have this terminology laid out last time in the previous video. This is called linear combinations, of this vector, so this x here, any x that is in Rn can be written as a linear combination of the E1, E2, and all the way to the En vectors. So this is a very important observation that we're gonna make use in order uh, for us to find that matrix A. So remember, our objective is to find that matrix A, okay? To construct that matrix A. And right now, I'm just pointing you to this notations, this new uh, vectors, this is called the standard basis vectors. Uh, for our end, and I'm uh, drawing you to uh, uh, this particular observations that all the x that is in our end, all the vector x that is in our end, can be written like this. Okay, can be written like this. Okay, so now we are proving it now. Now let's go. So t of x. So let's remember t is assumed to be linear, right? We are proving that. That's a hypothesis. So t is assumed to be linear. So I pick an x that is in the domain, which is a vector in our end. So I already show you that if you have vectors as in R and you can write it like this, okay? Now T being linear means that you can split this, okay, into this. So this is the additive properties. You might object and say that, hey, our additive properties is only for two vectors and now you use it for uh, multiple vectors. Is it true? Can we do that? Okay, so you see, remember the additive properties that we mentioned last time is only for two vectors, 
uh, but this is actually still true because I can ask you these questions and say, hey, how many vectors do you see? You say that this is three vectors, but for me, I say uh, this is only two vectors. One is this, one is this. So I have T of U plus T of V plus W. Okay, and then I apply this again to split this into TV plus TW. So as you can see, even though the additive property says that uh, it holds for two vectors, but for me, this is my two vectors. This is my one vector, this is my two vectors, and I can get, uh, I can change my perspective a little bit and get all this thing as well. So what I'm saying is that uh, additive properties uh, can allow you to split all this thing up like this also. So this is a vector. This is another vector all the way to here. You have n vectors. So T of all this can be again split to T of this, T of this, and all the way to T of this. Okay, this is nothing but the uh, additive properties. Okay, and how, why can we use additive property here? Because we are assuming our T is linear. So we can have all these additive properties. And then now for each individual's T, x1, e1 here. So I want you to remember x1 here is a number, okay? e1 is a vector. So x1 here is a real number, it's a scalar, okay? But your e1 is not. Your e1 is not a number, your e1 is this entire vector. So uh, the homogeneity properties allow you to take the number out, the scalar. You can take x1 out, you can take x2 out, you can take xn out. Now, so what happened in here, these are all utilizing um, the hypothesis that T is linear, okay? Now, the next steps, the next steps right here has nothing to do with the linear properties. It has nothing to do with T being linear. Now, this is uh, matrix multiplication properties. So this is matrix multiplications. This is nothing for, but matrix multiplications. So do you remember uh, in the uh, videos on the lectures on matrix multiplications, we say is that this is uh, matrix multiplications view as a linear combinations of the columns, remember? So x1 of this, x2 of this, and all the way to xn of this, okay, you can be you, you can write as this. So it's x1 of this column, x2 of this column, all the way to xn of this column. So this, okay, let me say that one more time. This one right here can be written like this, okay? Um, basically, you what you do if is that you take a matrix, okay, you take a matrix, and then you put TE1. So TE1, okay, just a reminder, your T is a mapping from Rn to Rm, okay? So your TE1 is an element in Rm. So this is going to be a M by one column vectors. So this is going to be M by one column vectors. This is called TE1, all right? So you put TE1 right here in the uh, matrix, okay? And then you put TE2, okay? This is your TE2. Right, and then you put TE3, so these are all your vectors, okay, and all the ways to TN, so you construct a matrix. This is a matrix, okay, this is a matrix, this is a matrix with uh, n columns, so all together there are n columns, first column, second columns, n columns, and how many rows do you have? M rows, so this is m by 1, m by n, sorry, m by n matrix, so this is an m by n matrix, so the way you construct this matrix is to do this, okay? So again, this vertical line here is to indicate these are the columns. We used this notation before. And now you can see T of X, okay, is A. This is what we call the matrix A now of X. So this is why I'm saying you put a matrix A uh, by placing this as your column vectors of your matrix A. And now you can see that T of X is A of X. So T being linear, okay, T being linear, Okay, it's the same as T being a matrix transformation because now we actually found a matrix that can be associated with this transformation. So T being linear is now T being a matrix transformation. So linear transformations is the same as matrix transformations. And we actually found this matrix A and we actually know how to construct this matrix A. And this is also called the standard matrix, okay? It's so a standard matrix for this uh, linear transformation. That's a standard matrix for that linear transformation. Let me give you one example. And once you see that example, uh, everything will make a lot of sense. And uh, if you need, you should go back and look at this proof. This is a key part of the proof. And it is just that. This is the linear property. This is the matrix multiplications, 
Okay, now let me show you this. So what I'm saying, okay, the things that we've been discussing so far is that if you have a mapping, okay, a mapping that is from R2 to R2, okay, and you've been told it is linear, then you've also been told that uh, T will map this E1, this is your E1 vectors, and it will map to 3, 4, and you have another T, okay, uh, not another T, uh, it's the same T, that map 0, 1, this is our E2, and it's mapped to 1 and negative 2, so as you can see right here. Then, from the theorem, uh, if we know this is linear, okay, if T is linear, from the previous theorem, we know that uh, we can write our matrix A as T10 and T01, place it as a column vector, so as you can see right here, we have a 3, 4, okay, and then we have a 1 and negative 2, and this is our Tx. Tx will be Ax, and the A is constructed by placing your Te1 right here and placing your Te2 right here in the matrix. And that's it. And now we know that a linear transformation is actually a matrix transformation. Okay, so now we know a linear transformation, T being linear, is T being a matrix transformation. Okay, and... Um, uh, you might ask, what is such a big deal about uh, T being linear and T being a matrix transformation? Actually, if you look at this, okay, do you see the significance of what we have just achieved? This is actually, actually very critical. It's, um, it's uh, a, a type of property which is very special. So, um, if you need, uh, you might want to uh, pause the video and think about what is the significance of this result right here? So, what is the significance of this result? Okay, so may um, so you can pause this video and uh, uh, give it a little bit uh, uh, a thought and see what we have just achieved. We have achieved great things just just now. And do you see why this is significant? Okay, let me tell you why this is significant. Okay. So you see that uh, for this transformation, okay, so this transformation, T, okay, takes an element in R2 and maps it to another element in R2. Now, what do we know about T? We don't really know a lot about T. We just know that T will take these vectors and maps to these vectors, okay? What else do we know about the T? We also know that T maps these vectors and maps it to these vectors. So we only know two things about this transformation. We know that T is linear. So we know T is linear. And we know that T will take this input and this is the output for that input. This is the input and this is the output for that input. We only know these two things. But knowing these two things is enough for us to know everything about T. So you look at this one. Once you have this, do you know that we actually know every single output for this mapping now? So your T of X, now I put no matter what X I have, so knowing two in information, knowing only two informations allowed me to know about everything, everything about that transformation. So now if I ask you, what is three, T34? Three, what does it map to? T34 will map to 34, okay? Multiply with this. What is T negative one five? T negative one five will map to this. What is TXY in general? What, whatever XY you have, well, it will map to this. So you can see knowing that only know these two information and T being linear, knowing only these two informations um, and T being linear, I know everything about that map. This is very, very, very special. It's a very special property for linear transformation. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, so human beings are non-linear, so we know that. Otherwise, we'll be able to say like, knowing how much you make, how much money you make per year, and let's say how many siblings you have, and I know everything about you. That's not possible because we are more complicated than that. But linear transformations is nice and, and easier in a sense compared to nonlinear transformation is that we have properties that's like this, okay? So this is a very special property that I want you to be able to appreciate that. So now we have a theorem. We can conclude what we have done. We actually show that linear transformation is a matrix transformation. This is the part that is slightly more involved. 
that we actually have to construct the matrix A. But the other direction is easier, that a matrix transformation is linear, that's easier. Uh, so we can put them together and say that uh, transformations um, of this form is linear if and only if they are matrix transformation. So that's one cool thing. And in the second video, we are actually going to explore this kind of prop, exploit this kind of properties uh, in order to help us solve some problems, okay? So we are going to look at uh, more of this kind of uh, applications in the second videos. So one last thing. So one last thing on this video is to tell you something about linear transformations. Doesn't really have to be always applies to uh, this kind of um, uh, uh, Euclidean space. So this is what we call Euclidean space. This is all the this is sets of all the m by one column vector. This is a set of all the m by one column vectors. Um, later on, we will learn what is a vector space, but uh, linear transformations can actually works for all type of vector spaces. This is just some special vector spaces. We will talk about what vector spaces means. But linear transformations doesn't have to restrict to this kind of sets. It can actually map something that is like this. So this is actually uh, a set of all the two by two matrices. This is a set of all the polynomial of degree at most two. So uh, let me write this thing down. So P2, we'll study all these uh, sets in detail next time. So this is a set of all polynomial. These are polynomial. Uh, polynomial has degree, okay? So uh, this is a polynomials of degree, okay? Degree uh, at most, at most two, at most two. So at most two. Okay, so uh, what is in this set? So what kind of polynomial that's in it? So this particular polynomial is in it. Okay, this polynomial is in it, okay. Uh, this polynomial is not in it because this is a polynomial of degree three. Okay, so this is a mapping that takes a matrix, a two by two matrix and map it to a polynomial of degree at most two. And it actually tells you how to map this. So you say, take this, place it here, take this and place it here. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, transformation. And uh, it's, uh, right now, you just see that this is a mapping that takes a matrix and send it to a polynomial. But this is actually linear. How do you show that? Well, again, same thing. Show the additive properties hold and show the homogeneity properties hold. So you take uh, these two vectors. So again, so U and then V, right? But this time, these are all two by two matrices. So you add up these two by two matrices. This is what you get. And remember, so the mapping says that uh, we are going to place whatever that is inside here and place it here, whatever that is inside here and place it here. So now this is the thing that is right here in this position. So you place it here and this is what you place it here. And we know how to do a uh, uh, operation, arithmetic operation on polynomial. So we know that this we can expand and regroup. So we know that this is actually just this. And we know that this is actually this, okay? This is actually this. So we can see if we uh, suppress all the detail. So if we suppress all the detail here and just concentrate on here and here, we see that the, the additive properties hold as well. So our uh, additive properties still hold. And uh, you can also check the homogeneity properties still hold. So again, this is also a linear transformation. So a linear transformation doesn't really have to take our n's to our m. Uh, we can actually also have it for some weird stuff like matrices and map it to polynomial. Matrices and map it to polynomial. Okay. So um, they are example that looks like this. This is also a linear um, uh, transformations because the additive properties and homogeneity properties hold from the properties of taking derivative. So the differential operator, this is also known as differential operator, something that's very important in differential equations and linear algebra. This is called differential operator. Differential, differential operator is linear. So you can uh, take a look. So this kind of transformations take a function that is differentiable and map it to a function. So this is a function that maps to another function of transformations doesn't really have to always uh, Rn to Rm. So in this case, we have a transformation that take a function and map it to another function. 
Let's look at the last example right here. This is a transformation that take a continuous function and map it to a number. So you can also take a function and map to a number, and this is how you do it. So remember, when you do integrations, this is a, a definite integral. This will give you the area under the curve. This is a real number. It looks very complicated, but it is a real number. So you should know it from calculus. And so this is also a linear transformations because the additive property hold from the integration property and uh, the because we got all that from Riemann sum from calculus and we also know that homogeneity properties also hold. So this is just the example to show you that we are not restrict ourselves in this course to linear transformation that is like this. Not only just this, we can also have transformations that take functions, map to functions, functions map to numbers, matrices map to polynomial, all kind of weird stuff. Uh, as long as we can still verify the uh, additive and homogeneity property, those are also linear transformations. So this is the first part of the videos on sections 1.8 and 8.1. So we learned linear transformation and matrix transformations. And uh, we also look at some kind of weird linear transformation on things that is not Rn to Rm. So one last thing before we go is I want to make you realize that the theorems that we prove the theorems that we proved, that matrix transformation and linear transformation, that particular theorem, remember, is only restricted to uh, mapping that takes element in Rn to Rm. So for situation that is like this, things are going to be complicated. And situation that's like this, things that's complicated. So it's linear transformations. Uh, is it a matrix transformation? We have trouble writing it as a matrix transformations, and we will see a, this kind of discussions uh, in the far future because we can't really talk about it now. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, knowledge and understanding of um, you know, important linear algebra concepts. So remember, the matrix transformation and linear transformations is applied to a mapping that takes element that is in Rn uh, and send it to another element that is in Rm. All right, that concludes our first part of the discussion on section 1.8 and 8.1, which involve the concept of linear transformation and matrix transformations. And as you can see, uh, in the context of uh, linear transformation that takes an element in the Euclidean space Rn and map it to an element that is in the Euclidean space Rm, these two concepts is actually, uh, they're actually equivalent. And we're going to make use of this uh, concept in the second videos uh, to compute the uh, standard matrix that we are going to use to describe a geometrical transformation such as rotation, reflection, and all that. So we'll see you there. And that's it for today. Goodbye.